Give me what to say Let me hear you Clearly define What I am to do Let every word Penetrate the heart Let what is said Leave them running to your arms Use me Lord Use me Lord If you would turn with me to 1 Peter 2nd chapter verse 20 and 21 And the word of God says, for what glory is it if when ye be buffeted for your faults, ye shall take it patiently. But if when ye do well and suffer for it, ye take it patiently. This is acceptable with God. Verse 21, for even here unto were ye called because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example that ye should follow his steps. The title is Follow the Example. Follow the example. To be an example, to be an example and follow in his steps, we must abide in him and he must abide in you. No one can duplicate Jesus' atonement ministry. But his disciples were called on to emulate his devotion to God and compassion for others. In order to follow his example, we must first deny ourselves and live for Christ and others. Say, follow the example. Matthew 16, 24 says, Then said Jesus unto his disciples, If any man will come after me, let him first deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. Well, let's explain that a little bit more. Let's go to the message Bible. The Message Bible says Jesus went to work on his disciples. Anyone who intends to come with me has to let me lead. That's the problem right there. We don't want him to lead us. We don't want the pastor to lead. We don't want the elders to tell us nothing. We don't want to, we have a problem with leadership. Uh, uh, you want to be an example? You must be a product of leadership. You must be under leadership. You must be under authority. We're living in a world today where nobody wants to be under authority. Nobody, everybody, 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 I'm grown, everybody, I, I can do it myself. But if you want to be an example, you must let the Lord lead you. S say, lead me. You're not in the driver's seat. I am. You say, say the Lord is. Don't run from suffering, embrace it. Follow me and, I, and I'll show you how to handle it, handle it. That's why we don't want uh, 
to go through sufferings and go through stuff because we don't know how to handle it. We don't know how to handle it. We, can, we can't take it. Why everybody talking about me? Uh, little stuff. And we ain't talking about big stuff. I'm talking about little stuff. We, we, we get upset over little stuff. The chair you sitting in. The area you sitting in. I've been sitting there for 10 years. And now, now I can't sit there no more. They done took all the pews out. We got these chairs here. Try to make it comfortable for you. And try to make it easy for the seniors and people sitting in the seniors' chairs who can run a mile. Who can jump, <laughs> who can jump over hurdles. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Uh, can I just talk to you tonight? You have to uh, if you want to be an example, you have to follow the example, and the example is Christ Jesus. You must sell all to be an example of Christ Jesus. Well, you must downsize. Say downsize. Uh, you got to downsize to be an example. Well, what is downsize? You know what downsize is. Uh, downsides means just get rid of some stuff. You got to get rid of some stuff. You hanging on to too much stuff. Like hanging on to what? Old hurts. Old, old disappointments. Old relationships. Old stuff. You you're hanging on stuff. And when you hang on to stuff, it, you carrying it around and people know that you got a problem. Because you, you get hanging on, hanging on to, hey, just, hey, just hanging on, just down. You need to get rid of some stuff. You're carrying too much baggage to be an example of Christ. When Christ chose his disciples, when they were fishermen, they dropped everything to follow him, to be an example. Ain't that something how, how he was walking by, saw them fishing, and he looked on them, and he compelled them to come with him. And they dropped everything to follow Christ. They had families. They had a shipping uh, industry. They had boats. They were sailors. They were fishermen. They, they provided for their families. Not, it didn't say they didn't stop providing for their families, but they stopped what they were doing, heard what he was saying, believed in what he was saying, and followed him. And they became disciples, a follower of Christ. They became examples they had to learn how to be an example. They watched him. They followed him. They saw what he did. And they took it all in. Because one day when he left the scene, he, they had to be examples of Christ. They had to do what he did. You can't do what he did if you haven't been following him. That's why a church ministry, Harris Memorial ministry is important. We have a great leader. He's a great follower. He's a great teacher. He's a great mentor. He, why wouldn't you want to follow somebody who's like that, who's preaching us the adulterated word of God? He just doesn't preach it. He lives it. And we ought to take the example from a leader and at least try to imitate him. He's a prayer warrior. He loves us. He watches out for us. He's looking out for us. Anytime you want to start a new ministry in the church called, what's that word? Squads. He's looking out for you. He's looking out for us. Why the squads? Well, 
you got to understand what Moses did. <laughs> Moses couldn't handle all them folk. Four million, five million, I don't know how many it was. And he had to choose out some men. He had to break it up. And he put them in groups. And, and you know, too many, too many, say too many. But the squad is for us to look out for each other. To keep up with each other. Huh? 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 I said, huh? <laughs> I'm excited about the pot, the squad. Well, Christ was unselfish. Say unselfish. He was not a selfish Christ. Selfish. Say selfish. Selfish means egotistical, greedy, self-centered. Uh, oh, let me tell you. Uh, uh, devoted to or caring only for oneself. That's why he started it. It's just you. Ain't nobody else. You, so now you got to start caring for somebody else. You got to start looking out for somebody else. You got to start watching out for somebody else, only just not you and your foe, you and somebody else. Romans 5 and 8. Romans 5 and 8 says, But God commandeth his love towards us, in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Christ died for us. I came to tell you, we deserve to die. We deserve to die. We deserve to die. Adam, the day you eat of this, tree, of this fruit, this, you eat of the tree, you will surely die. And because he lost his focus, we all got to what? Die. Bad when you lose your focus. People die when you lose focus. I come from the, um, the industry of the firefighting industry. And when you, uh, they, they call it uh, 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 when you get overconfident. When police officers become overconfident. You never can lose your focus when you're fighting a fire or, or a police officer or in the armed forces because complacency can get you killed. Losing your focus can, will, will destroy you. Now, let's bring, it, uh, let's bring it down to the common people. Okay, if you're a fisherman, you're going fishing, you better make sure the motor is running right. Make sure it's gas and oil in there before you get out on the big lake. Because it might, <laughs> because just because it ran last week, Elder Miller, it might not work this week. Uh, because you might get overconfident and get out there on the lake and can't get back. Mm. Focus. Focus. So we deserve to die. Uh -huh. For Romans 6 and 23 says, For the wages of sin is death, uh -huh. but the gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus. Well, what is the wages? The wages emphasizes what we deserve. What we deserve. Say, we deserved it. We deserved. We deserve it. Well, uh, well, here's the other one. The gift of God emphasizes unmerited favor. Well, uh, unmerited favor. Say, I want the favor. Mm -hmm. Yeah, grace. That's what grace is. Grace is God's unmerited favor. I want grace and mercy. I want the grace and mercy. 
you better ask for the grace and mercy. The Bible says grace and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will, what? Well, I want to dwell in the house of the Lord forever. You better get his grace. It's his grace. Yeah, yeah, it's his. It belongs to him. God took our sins on himself, giving us, giving his life in, in his stead, in our stead. We must deny ourselves and live for Christ and others. When Christ was here on earth, he had great compassion for the sick, the lame, the blind, and the sinful. He had great compassion. Well, I love this particular story. Uh, the lame man was at the pool of Bethesda. And he had been there such a long time until everybody knew him. He, you know, that's the man right there. And then, and then when the story says, the verse says, when the water was troubled, you had the first one in, say first one in. Well, Jesus was coming along and saw the man there and started a conversation. And when he started the conversation with the man, he, he asked the man, uh, uh, can I just paraphrase and make it in layman terms? My brother, do you want to be healed? Do you want to be delivered? Do you want to be free? And the lame man said, well, he say, man, the, the water. I, I wasn't nobody here to help me get in the water. And he said, I ain't asked you that. I said, do you want to be healed? Do you want to be delivered? Do you want to be set free? You got to, you, if you want something from God, you got to ask him. You got, you got to, we want to be delivered, but we don't ask him. We want to be set free when we don't depend on him. We want him to do stuff for us, and, and we don't even recognize him. And the, lame, and the lame man finally got the message and, and gave him the right answer. And, and guess what he said? Get up. Listen, I, it goes farther than that. He didn't tell him to get up and get in the water. He told him to get up and take up your bed and get on out of here. <laughs> You didn't have to get in the water. You just had to have faith in me. You got to have faith in God. You got to have faith in the man who can make you get up. That's what he was teaching him. He said, I'm here. You're looking at, you're looking at the water. I am the water. You want to get in the water? I am the water. I'm the living water. Ah, ah, ah. It ain't in the pool, it's in the living water. Woo. Say the living water. Have you had a fresh drink of the living water? Well, no, let me get on out of here. Uh, well, he's the same today than he was back then. Go to Hebrews 13 and 8. Right. Hebrews 13 and 8 says, Jesus Christ the same yesterday and today and forevermore. He understands the cares about our infirmities and needs. We should also uh, be understanding and caring for the, lot, for the less fortunate and the needy. Say the less fortunate and the needy. When is the last time you called and checked on your neighbor? Our neighbor next door, I'm, I'm going to tell his testimony. Because he don't know the Lord, but, but he knows every Sunday. We, he, they always ask, where y'all going? 
every Sunday. They, they've been asking for three, four years. So they figured it out. We go into church. Y'all go to church. They know when we come, and they know when we come back. And they know where we've been, to church. But Al got sick. He had one of them cancer problems. And Al came to me out in the driveway. We was getting the mail. And Al said, I got a bad report. And he told me what the report was. And Al started crying. And when he cried, he went in the house. And then the next day he came back out and said he was sorry. You know, he didn't want to put all that information on me. And I said, no, Al, that's, no, that's all right. I said, Al, but this is what I'm going to do. This is what we're going to do. We're going to pray for you. And Al said, thank you. Went in the house. Every time he came out, I said, Al, we're praying for you. A few days ago, Al came back and said, I want to thank you for praying for me because I got a good report. Now, he, then, am I right, Delos? He said he got a good report. Now, it get better than this. It get better than this. Al done told his golf buddy. His golf buddy told his wife the hell didn't pray for because he got cancer. Am I right, the Lord? So we, we told him we're going to pray for him too. They, what's the name? They, we didn't ask what his name was. They told us what his name was. <laughs> we start the Lord's night in the morning, start calling his name out in prayer, you know, asking God, you know. You know, wasn't loud. We just called his name out in prayer. And the Lord said, my witness, a few days ago, they come back and say, he at home doing well. Uh, the, the treatment is doing fine. <laughs> Thank God that I was an example before unbelievers. That's why you got to live right in front of people because you don't know who's watching you. I didn't heal the man. God did. God brought them to, to, and they wasn't us. It was them. Be an example. Living right. Acting right yes, with your neighbor. Yes. You never know who's watching. That's why, that's why you got to get rid of some of that baggage. Some of that hate baggage. Everybody ain't mad at you. Everybody, all the people, you know. Uh-huh. Can I, can I get back on track here? Huh? Uh, Proverbs 18, 24. Christ is our friend. Say, you need a friend. You need a friend. Proverbs 18, 24 says, A man that hath friends must show himself mm, friendly. That's what examples do. You must show yourself what? Friendly. But there is a friend that sticketh closer than a brother. I just came to ask you tonight, what's his name? Now, I heard four people. He must ain't your friend. I said a friend that stick closer than your brother, your mama, your daddy, your wife, your husband. I said closer than, and he has a name, and I just want to know, 
Do you know him? What's his name? Jesus. Well, act like it then. You got to act like you got a friend. You like it on Facebook, friends on Facebook with everybody. Them jokers ain't your friend. I'm talking about a true friend. One who sticks closer than your natural family. I know you're close to your family, but sometimes we can, we can have some disagreements in the family until they get it straight, until they get it together. But I'm talking about someone closer than flesh and blood. I'm talking about uh, a man called Jesus, a man from Calvary, a man. I'm, I, I, he came down in flesh, God in the flesh who dwelled among us, who walked among us, who done great and marvelous things. And still people don't understand that he's a, a friend that sticks closer than anybody we know. You better get to know him. Christ is dependable and trustworthy. We should follow his example. Be true to God, true to others, and true to ourselves. Say it again. To be true to God, be true to others, and true to ourselves. You better recognize, get rid of some of that stuff. Christ kept the faith. I said he kept the faith. He kept the faith. He was undaunted by persecution. He was ridiculed in even death. We must keep on keeping on when trials and tribulations and testing strike, strike us like Christ. That's why he's an example. You know, when he went through, he didn't say a word. He didn't say a word. Oh, when he came down off the mountain and then the disciple had to kiss him. What was his name? I knew, see, everybody knew Judas, but when it was time to say Jesus, Jesus. <laughs> uh, and Judas kissed him on the cheek. And when the disciple, and when the, uh, those temple uh, guards and went to grab him, and the power of God knocked him back. Knocked him back. No man can take my life, can take his life except as I lay it down. And he went quietly. But just before he went quietly, one of them disciples got upset and cut off his ear. Cut off one of them jokers' ear. And it was the last major surgery he'd done before he went to Calvary. He did ear surgery. I came to tell you tonight, you need some ear surgery. You, you need to be... You, your ears is stopped up. You've got to get that wax out of your ear and start listening, reading, and studying the word of God because we all going to need him. And the only thing, let, let me tell you something. Uh, they're getting rid of the Bible. they fighting in Fort Worth, Texas now, removing all these books from the library, and the number one book was the Bible. Ain't that something? Ain't that something? Something else. Something else. It, in Grand Rapids, Michigan, the week before the Shepherds Conference, they had the biggest witches warlock parade in Michigan. And one of the pastors told, pastor had talked about that. He talked about that witches and warlock. They had the biggest 
the week before the pastors in, in, in Grand Rapids. And one pastor told me he called his friends and said, what we going to do about it? And he said none of his friends called him back. I can call his name, and you all know his name, mother. I ain't going to call his name. But he told me. He told me. He told me what he did was he called his church in on a fad. He said, he said, I don't need, he said, Hawkins, I didn't need them to pray. I called my church in on a fast, and we prayed the whole day while they was out there doing what they was doing. Praying, 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 casting the devil out, God keeping watch over his flock. That reminded me of our pastor. That's something what he would do. Ain't you, ain't you glad you got a pastor like that? So, pastor, you're not the only one. Uh, you're not by yourself. There's other pastors who are in the same mind frame as you, talking about witches and devils and casting out devils and watching over the flock. And I, I told him, I'll tell you who it was after church. Since we're on the internet. <laughs> Tell somebody, keep the faith. Keep the faith. Keep the faith. Philippians 4.13. I can do what? All things. Through Christ that strengthens me. You got to understand. I'm, listen. Listen. You got to understand, you can't do nothing in your own strength. That's the problem. That's my problem. I'll fix it. I'll handle it. I can do that. And when you hit your head and mess it all up, and all of us is there. All of us didn't try to fix some stuff on our own. All of us, in our families, on our jobs, every, I, none of us have, 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 um, have really, really, I'm talking about when we growing up, I can fix this. Like change a tire. I can't change a tire no more. I got, I got triple A. Ain't no sense. Ain't no sense to me. Ain't no sense. To me. Ain't no. Ain't no sense to me changing no top. Them changing top. Look, look. Somebody. Uh, uh, you know, my daughter went zip lining in uh, 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 up there, and she had to. Woo, woo. Come on, Dad. You ought to try this. I said, No. <laughs> zip lining days are over. <laughs> Bungee cord jumping is over. And then they say, you ought to jump out of a plane. No. no, 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 I'm not. I'm not going with Bear, you know, the show and go. I, I ain't doing that. I ain't doing that. I, know. I once was young. But now I'm old. And then he said, I never seen the righteous for second. No, but I once was young. You, you got to know your limitation. I know my limitation. I can't fix stuff, so I just got to ask Jesus. I got to ask. You No, this is what it's all about. Our pastor is teaching us to ask Jesus for yourself. You got to ask him for yourself. Ask him for yourself. And reason why we don't ask him for ourselves because we do not have a relationship. You need a relationship to ask him. People are asking. Even we asking for our children. Listen, 
they don't have a relationship. Why should he do stuff for them and they don't have a relationship? But they're smart enough to know that daddy got one. <laughs> they know. They know daddy got a relationship, mama got a relationship. And if daddy don't do it, they go to mama, and then they get to praying, and then guess what? It happens. But then what they don't understand is, is, that, is that we pray for them every morning, asking God to put it on their mind. Not just my children, but all of the children. All of the saints' children. We start naming them, going back to school. See, 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 when you start having compassion for others, he'll do the same for you. With his what? Arms wide open. Oh, God, God, God. Say compassion. Being an example, being an example. In, we're living in a day now where where being example is out the door because it came from the top down. It, came, it comes from the top down. Top leadership. Example, top leadership. Down, top down. That's why when you pray for the pastor, you don't, you don't touch his head because we don't have the authority to lay hands on his head. He has the authority to lay hands on our head. It takes a bishop to lay hands on his head because it's from the top. Uh, we can reach out and say, Lord, protect him. We can reach out and say, Lord, watch over him. We can reach out, keep him in our prayers. Huh? I'm, am, I, am I saying something? Huh? Maybe, maybe y'all didn't know that. It's from the top down. Well, Jesus rose from the dead victorious. He rose from the dead victorious over death, hell, and the grave. Go to 1 Corinthians 15, 55, and 57. Well, I'm about to get ready and close right up in here. Because a few Sundays ago, pastor was talking about this scripture. He was all in this scripture. And it says, O death, mm, where's thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? But here it is. But, say but. but. Thanks be to God which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, through our Lord and Jesus Christ. You got to have the victory. That's why worship service is important. That's why worship and praise is important. You know why it's important? You know why it's important? Because when you come in here on Wednesday, when you come in here on Sunday, you carry in baggage that you need to get rid of. And the way to get rid of it is by lifting your hands in the sanctuary, by standing up, clapping, singing gospel songs, hymns and spiritual songs so you can shake the dust off. Shake off Monday. You missed Tuesday. You didn't come on Wednesday. Then it's Thursday. Then it's Friday. Then it's Saturday. Then here you come dragging in on Sunday, carrying too much baggage throughout the week. And the praise team trying to pull. And you sitting there looking. And you're wondering why What's going on? Well, I'm going to give you a chance tonight to shake something off. I'm going to give you a chance tonight to get, re to get renewed for tomorrow morning. I'm going to give you another chance tonight to have some victory. Because some of us have been going through. 
some of you been going through. Some of us been having some problems. Some of us got something on our table. Some of us got something before God. And the only way to get it to him right and quick is having a praise. Jump up on your feet. Jump up on your feet. Jump up on your feet. Clap your hands. The Bible says clap your hands. All oh, you people. Shout. 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 Shout unto the Lord. Give it thanks. Give God the glory. Give it praise. Sing it out. Jericho, the walls of Jericho. You got a Jericho wall. I said each and every one of us got a Jericho wall. And you just need to start going around your wall seven times. Around your wall. Around your house. Around your situation. Around your problems. Around, around, go around, keep going around until God bring that wall down, bring it down, give you deliverance, give you joy, joy unspeakable and full of glory. Shout unto the Lord, yeah. You better walk, walk around your situation. Walk around your situation. Walk around your situation. I'm walking around my situation. I got situation. I needed to bring it down. And to God be the glory. Now that's how, that's how you come in on Wednesday. That's how you come in on Sunday. You bring it with you. Then it'll make preaching easy for the pastor. It'll make preaching easy when you bring the joy of the Lord. Because the Bible said the joy of the Lord is our strength. That's why you're weak. You ain't got no joy. You need joy. Joy coming from the wells of salvation. You, you need some salvation. I'm through. I'm through. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. Help us to be an example. I want to be an example. Just like Christ was an example. He was a living example before us. Dear Lord, we thank you for the word on today. Keep each and every one of us. Thank you for helping us get rid of some of the baggage that we've been carrying all week. Situations and stuff. Thank you for listening. If this teaching has been a blessing to you and you'd like to partner with our ministry to share the message of Jesus Christ, please visit our website at www 
www.hmclive.org and click the donate button. If you're in our area, we invite you to join us at 4317 Lippincott Boulevard, Burton, Michigan, 48519. Harris Memorial Church of God in Christ, teaching the truth and showing the love. Use me, Lord.